uh, hours before the NBC historic uh, event, uh, more than 20 years in the afternoon prime time, we didn't see the free boxing. So I'm going to ask you, BJ, about uh, how do you see the fight between uh, um, between Steve Cunningham and Tomek Adamek? How do you see, knowing the boxers, the fight will develop? Uh, I mean, I think it's going to be a great fight. First of all, um, I was at the fight four years ago when they fought at the Prudential Center, and it was a it was a great fight. Steve Cunningham is a very good boxer. He has all the experience in the world. He has fought for world championships. Uh, I think he's had six or seven world championship fights um, of his last seven fights. So he, he's got a lot of experience. He's got the skill set. That's not the question. The question is, can Steve Cunningham take the Thomas Adamick punch, A, and B, can Steve Cunningham hurt Thomas Adamick when he connects? Because in the first fight, he landed a lot of really good punches but wasn't really able to really get too much respect from Tomas. Now, Tomas is a very big puncher. He comes forward. He's strong. He's had a lot of time to settle in at heavyweight. This is his 11th heavyweight weight fight since they fought last. So I feel like Tomas has time at heavyweight, his experience to really grow into the heavyweight division and fill out his body and be comfortable. Tomas is going to have a big advantage in that aspect. Can Steve Cunningham take the North Philly out of himself and make it a fight where he's actually smart and cerebral instead of always trying to go inside and engage. If he can, he's got a shot. If he can't, then I look, uh, I think Thomas Adamek's going to be too big of a puncher, too strong for Steve at this stage in Steve's heavyweight career. If Steve can make it a smart fight, stay on the outside, he's got a good shot, but he's got to fight a perfect fight because Adamek's the harder puncher. This is exactly what uh, the Cunningham trainer said. Nazim Richardson said, uh, if you will be disciplined, you have a chance to control the fight. The moment you forget about discipline, you want to do the hard thing, the character thing, let's, let's do the slack fest. I don't want to be even in your corner. You agree, obviously, with the statement. He has to control the fight on a distance, move left, right, never engaged. Another thing is, you know... But see, is, it, is it possible? Uh, yeah, it's possible, and he's got the experience to do it. You know, he fought a similar type of fight when he fought Marco Huck. Um, Steve's a very, very good boxer, but Steve is from Philadelphia. So <laughs> when you say that, that he, he's got a little bit of that uh, mentality that, listen, when somebody hits me, I'm going to hit him back, and Steve has got to put that to one side tonight in order to be, you know, successful against Adamek. Otherwise, Adamek's too strong. He's got too much experience, but, uh, you know, Steve does have the pedigree. He was a very good amateur. He knows how to box. He knows how to fight without getting hit. So he's going to have to do that perfectly, and he's going to have to really utilize his speed advantage because Adamek outweighs him by almost 20 pounds, and that's a lot over 12 rounds. Is it uh, Adamek overconfident? Because no question about it, he is confident that he can fight no matter style Steve Cunningham brings. Uh, what is it Tomek Adamek overlooking when possibly going into the ring versus uh, against Steve? I don't, I don't I think, you know, Tomas is just a lot more comfortable now. He's with Roger Bloodworth. Um, I think Roger's brought an element of uh, relaxation, of confidence to Tomas because Tomas feels he's a more complete fighter now. He feels he's better. So what he needs to be careful about is Steve Cunningham has very good feet. He moves around the ring very well. That extra weight on the Adamic frame might slow him down just a half step, and that might be all Steve Cunningham needs to win this fight. Uh, there is a, you know, you can you can tell that this is Thomas Adamek versus Philadelphia Fighters was it Chambers, it's yeah. Cunningham. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of guys from Philadelphia who is fighting Tomek Adamek now. <laughs> we all know about this school of Philadelphia fighting. Just like you said, BJ Big Hard, never giving an inch. But I agree with you 100%. This fight will be a cerebral fight for Cunningham. Don't go into anything, any exchange with Adamek, if you can. Yeah, I mean, he, he can't do that. He can't afford to do it. Uh, Adamek is, is not just a power puncher. I mean, he's a good, strong puncher, but he shoots combinations. So it's going to be very hard for Steve to get into a dogfight and leave without any scratches on him. So he's got to be careful about that. And, uh, I mean, you hit it right on the head. He's got to fight a very cerebral f a fight, a very smart, intelligent fight, an intellectual fight. Um, and, you know, if he does that, I think he can make it close and competitive and uh, possibly pull out a victory. You were, you were ringside, or you did see the fight uh, when Tommy Garamek fought Travis Walker. I did, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was a two completely different Adamex. <laughs> uh, the one before he went down, and the one we, like, like forget who he was. 
in the heavyweight division and came back to this to this pedigree as a as a brawler and in the light heavyweight division and cruiserweight division. Is it the way for Adamek to fight Cunningham and possibly other guys, or, or just work versus Travis Walker? He, you know what, Travis Walker. Anybody he hits, he hurts. I mean, he's a he's a very powerful guy. Uh, Travis Walker knocked down Chris Ariola. He knocked down Thomas Adamek. He's got a lot of good knockouts. He also just knocked out the guy over from Australia. Um, I forget what his name is, but uh, you know, big good fighter over there, Callie Meehan. He Callie Meehan. Yeah. This guy has got legitimate power. If if Travis Walker hits you, you're going down. But Thomas Adamek learned a very important lesson in that fight. You cannot get careless with heavyweights. Heavyweights is a different animal. So he realizes that now. And uh, you know that aggressive style that he showed us against Travis Walker. That's the type of fight he's going to have to fight very early to be able to make sure that he sets the pace against Steve Cunningham. Because if he lets Steve get comfortable and start boxing and moving around and getting a little confidence, that could be a very, very bad night for Thomas Adam. BJ, I have to ask you one thing. I mean, you're watching those top cruiserweight. You are cru top cruiserweight. I mean, there is a question that I want to ask you, and you know the question. When you, when, when are we going to see you fighting as a heavyweight? I mean, everybody is going, this, getting this couple of more uh, yeah. pounds, uh, looking you framed. There will be no problem for you to fighting yeah. with 203. You probably are 203 right now. I'm about 220 right now. Okay, yeah. so, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> hey, you know, theoretically by the numbers, I'm a heavyweight right now. But here's the thing. You know, Steve Cunningham was a champion, a cruiserweight, before he went to heavyweight. Uh, Adam so this is this is what you want to do. Yeah, I, I got to get a title belt before I move up. I mean, I I, I don't want to move up to heavyweight before I have the opportunity to fight for a world title at cruiserweight. I feel like I owe that to myself. I want to become a world champion before you know I try to move up, and uh, you know it's right there for me now. So I, I just got to be a little more patient, and hopefully it'll come on my next fight. So that's what I'm looking for. With BJ Flores, we're gonna hear him uh, in a couple of hours doing live uh, commentary for the fight. Now you you, you guys, everybody saw it and hear it what he predicts for the for the fight the main event on NBC thank you very much no problem thanks for having me thank you